Hey guys, it's Pelly. Welcome back to Fash Life, the series that keeps you updated on everything fashion. In this video, we will go over Couture Week, Linda Evangelista recent interview, and remembering Manfred Terry Mugler. Let's begin. When one fashion week ends, another one begins. This week was all about Ut Couture. Let's go over some of them right now. Chanel by Virginie Vallard Model and writer Charlotte Gasaragi kicked off the Chanel Spring 2022 Ut Couture show on horseback wearing the brand's signature tweed jacket in black. Described as fresh and feminine and between fantasy and reality, the collection takes inspiration in constructivist artwork. A series of pensu opened the show, followed by the brand's famous tweed jackets and coats, then of course the dresses that are clearly by Virginie Vallard. While it's nothing we haven't seen from Chanel, the collection focuses a lot on lightness. There's high slits, lace and sheer materials, as well as feather detailing that is on trend. Besides that, there's really nothing to discuss. Even the giant black eye makeup couldn't make this show any less forgettable. Jean-Paul Gaultier by Glenn Mortens The Diesel and Y Project director celebrate JPG by embracing the brand's code. There were Gaultier-esque 90s prints and tool dresses. Martin also featured these lacing looks that can be traced back to the 2000s. It also can't be a Jean-Paul Gaultier show without some sort of waist snatching bodice. While there were a lot of references, Martin's own identity can be felt throughout the entire presentation. The designer cleverly combined his experimental and dramatic nature with the very provocative playfulness of Gaultier. Victor and Roth the Victor & Roth Oud Couture Spring 2022 collection is inspired by the glamorous allure of old Hollywood Dracula movies. According to the brand, the designers are utilizing their work to transform the notion of fear into something positive. The show is defined by the elongated shoulders that seem to be a nod to horror icon Count Orlok. The designer definitely transformed fear into something positive as we see lots of vibrant colors on the runway. All of the looks were perfectly executed as well. The collection gave off this Adams Family meet Beetlejuice vibe, a perfect balance of camp and glamour. Scaparelli by Daniel Roseberry Since debuting his first collection in 2019, Daniel Roseberry has really made Scaparelli the one fashion house to watch when it comes to couture. The fashion designer is all about surrealism, and this collection is no different. The collection is mostly made out of black, white, and gold looks, with the designer stating that it wasn't so much a return to basics as it was a move towards the elemental. Space and priestess motif can be seen throughout the whole show, as well as the brand's signature vintage motifs. The Gold Baguette was a conversation piece online, especially when it was revealed that the famous Scaparelli Gold received an upgrade for the show. The collection ends with top model Adele Cat in a black ensemble featuring a comb bra swirl that connects to the train of the dress. In conclusion, Scaparelli won Couture Week. Linda Evangelista is featured on the cover of People magazine this week opening up about her cosmetic procedure that went wrong. The interview includes new and revealing photos of the supermodel, as well as an exclusive podcast interview. Linda Evangelista was one of the top supermodels of the 90s and has been named the greatest supermodel several times. Back in September 2021, the supermodel filed a $50 million lawsuit against cool sculpted company Celtech Aesthetic Inc. She said the procedure not only destroyed her livelihood, but sent her into a cycle of deep depression. According to the article, the lawsuit is about recovering her confidence and sense of self after being diagnosed with PAH, which is being called a rare side effect from the procedure. 
The supermodel went on the People Every Day podcast. Let's listen to a little bit of her conversation. I understood, understood cool sculpting would take care of that. And it was supposed to be non-invasive, not painful, no surgery. And that expression, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, mm. sort of came to fruition on me there. When, when I first started cool sculpting, I thought it would be advantageous for me personally and professionally. Did I want to like what I saw in the mirror? You know, to noticed, you know, I can see, see things. And so I see I, I, that I don't think designers will, Versace won't want to dress me with that sticking out of my body. Fellow supermodel Naomi Campbell was recently announced to be on the March cover of British Vogue. In the issue, she shared her thoughts on Linda Vigilista's recent lawsuit. Naomi said, She's a strong woman and I think she's very brave. It takes a lot of courage to come out and speak her truth. I stand by her absolutely. So what do you think about this story? I think it was great hearing from the legend herself. After so many years, it must not be easy going through something like this. She still looks like the supermodel she is, and I hope the lawsuit ends in her favor. Now it's time for our fashion moments of the week. The nomination for the Oscar was announced this week and received a lot of mixed reaction. The film nominated for costume design includes Cruella, Sarano, Dune, Nightmare Alley, and West Side Story. Balenciaga also dropped their Spring 22 campaign. New week, new collaboration. This time is Jimmy Choo and Mugler. Lastly, French folk got dragged for saying yes to Julia Fox's headscarf. One of the greatest designers of all time has died at 73 years old. Manfred Terry Mugler was born in Strasbourg, France on December 21st, 1948. As a child, he was very creative and imaginative. His experience performing on stage will help guide him in creating his extravagant fashion shows later in his life. During his early 20s, Mugler worked as a freelance designer, designed for many fashion houses all over Europe. He debuted his first collection in the 70s and established a fashion empire by the 80s. Thanks to his success, Mugler was invited to join the Haute Couture Train Union and debuted his first ever Haute Couture collection in 1992. He became famous for his theatrical couture shows that took inspiration from science fiction, gothic art, and old Hollywood. He both shocked and awed his audience. Mugler also dedicated his work to women creating work of arts meant to liberate and empower. Besides being a world-renowned designer, he was also an accomplished photographer as well. Mugler left his fashion house in the 2000s. When asked why, he said, mainly because fashion was an incredible means of artistic expression in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, but it wasn't like that anymore in the 2000s when creation was completely stifled by marketing and business. Despite leaving his label, he continued to design for musicals, operas, and even to Beyonce's war tour. While Mugler himself kept a low profile, his haute couture creation would continue to make appearances in the limelight, being lended to musicians, models, and celebrities. In 2019, he designed Kim Kardashian's Met Gala dress and presented his first major exhibition of his designs. His work continued to be applauded and discussed as new generation discover it. With unforgettable pieces after unforgettable pieces, Manfred Terry Mugler is really the master of haute couture. So those were all of the stories today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like and leave your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe for more fashion related videos and remember, to keep living that flashlight. Bye.